Okay, hi everyone, welcome to a brand new video. So previously I have a playlist with the Firebase library. So this is the library for Firebase using Python. So I have a series of videos about this library. I have a video on Firebase authentication, a video on Firebase storage, and I think five videos about Firebase real-time database. And these are all separate Firebase features that they provide that you can use for different parts of your application. So what this video is going to be is that this video is going to be linking the Firebase real-time database with the Firebase cloud storage part. So by linking these two together, we can create a more complex or advanced application. However, if you are unfamiliar with both the real-time DB and um, cloud storage functions in Python, you can still follow along. However, if you want a more in-depth um, di in -depth discussion or explanation, you can go back to my playlist, which will be linked down below. All right, so without further ado, let's get started. So this is my console.firebase.google.com. So this is where I want to view my Firebase projects. So we want to create a new project. So let's just call it real-time DB storage demo. All right, so let's continue. You can enable Google Analytics. It's no problem, just choose the default. And we're creating the project. So while the project is being created, let's just go to PyCharm. So I have created a blank PyCharm project. So this is an empty project. You can use PyCharm or virtually any other text editor that you have that you use for Python. So it's no problem here. Now, what we want to do is that we want to go to the terminal. So if you don't already have Firebase, I suggest doing it here. So pip install Firebase 4. And then I already have it. So requirement already satisfied. However, in your case, you would probably wait for a few minutes for Firebase 4 to be downloaded. Now, why do I say Firebase 4 and not Firebase? So there was recently an error that was discovered within the Firebase library, and the library is, I think, not really being maintained, at least for these couple of years. So a fork of it on GitHub, Firebase 4, provides us with more advanced applications as well as it fixes the error. Now, a good thing is that if you've already used the Firebase library, there is no problem. You just have to switch to this library and then all your code will still run the same. So you don't even have to change anything. But this is just a side note. Anyways, in this case, make sure to download Firebase 4. So pip install Firebase 4. All right, so now that we have installed Firebase 4, we can actually create a new Python file. So let's just say main.py. And now we have a new Python file. So let's just import Firebase. All right, so you will have to still import Firebase and not Firebase 4. Now let's go back to our project on Firebase. So now the project has been created. This is our dashboard or overview for the project. And here I can have access to the different Firebase features that we have. So let's just get started. And we have to first add an app. So before we can actually create our database and storage, we have to add an application. So let's just add a web app. And by we have to give the app a name, so real time db storage demo we register the app and now that the app has been registered we get a series of credentials that we can use to set up our application and connect to it through python so i'm just going to copy this and go back to python so let's just say firebase config and we create a python dict and then we paste these credentials now, one thing to keep in mind about Python, so if you've seen my videos, I've already said this multiple times, is that these must be strings. So this is not okay for them to be without the quotation marks because Python will regard them as variables rather than strings. So I'm just going to take a minute to convert every single one of them to a string. All right, so now that we've, we've had them as strings, the next thing to do would be to actually initialize an application using these credentials. So to do so, we just have to say Firebase or any other random variable name. So Firebase is equal to Firebase dot initialize app and we give it the configuration credential variables. All right, so now we initialize an app. Like we said, Firebase has a series of uh, different features. What Firebase supports are the storage, auth, and database. And database. So this is just essentially what Firebase covers. And when we say database, Firebase only covers the real-time database and not the cloud Firestore, unfortunately. So just keep that in mind. So we want to work with the database. So let's just initialize the database variable. So database is Firebase dot 
database and storage is firebase dot storage so we will not be using the authentication part in this tutorial but in a future tutorial maybe we will include that as well so now that we've created these now we can get started and start working with our application so let's just go back to our firebase console so we continue to console we can um so there's a dog barking obviously so we can go to the database we have two options to create a database so the first option is a cloud firestore and the second one is a real-time database so in this tutorial we're working with the real-time database i do have a video though um, detailing and describing the difference between the two databases and how you can choose the appropriate one for your own project or application so check that out if you're interested so now we have to start in test mode so that our rules can be true for read and write meaning that we can send and um, create data as well as read from the database so let's enable this and our database will be created so this is our real-time database and there is nothing there is only the root node so if you've seen any of my previous videos you know what this is otherwise it's just a root node for your database now let's go to storage but i'm just going to open it in another tab so we can keep track of what's happening in both of them so now that we go to storage we want to initialize some um, cloud storage for our application so let's just get started we wait for it to be created so in the meantime let's just check out what we want to do so let's talk about our goal for this application so for this application we want to upload files to the file storage but we want to have certain information about users in a database and store within that user's information some details about what files they've uploaded. So this is essentially what we want to do. So how are, how are we going to do this? So let's say I want to take the user's name. So name is input enter name. And then I want to take this user's age. So enter age. And I want to take their profession. It's input enter profession all right so this is what i'm trying to do what am i going to do next i'm going to ask this ask this person to upload a file to the file storage so here's what i'm going to say file name is input enter the name of the file you want to upload to storage and um cloud file name will be enter the name of the file in the cloud all right and then what we're going to do is that we're going to push some data into the real-time database according to this information and just check out how we're going to link the uh, URLs of this document in the actual database. So let's just do this. Let's first set up our storage. So let's just modify the rules right here so we can actually make sure that we um, can publish and can create and upload some files and view them as well. So this is our storage. There are no files here yet. And what we want to do is that we want to be able to add some files and then link it to the database. Okay, so I have some files here. So I have this dummy text file as well as a Shakespeare poem file. All right, so I'm going to try to upload these into the real time, uh, into the file storage and link it to the real time database. So let's just type the code and I'll explain as I go. So what I want to push into the real time database, so db.child users.push, and I'm going to push data. Right? So this is what we usually do when we're adding data to a database. So data is going to be equal to a standard Python dictionary. And this dictionary will be pushed to the database under the child node users. So right here, we will have this node with a child node users, and then the bunch of users all falling under it. So this is where we're going to push the users. So what about the actual file? So we want to actually upload the file. So we want to say storage dot child cloud file name dot put file name 
So what does this essentially mean? What this means is that I'm going to ask Firebase to take its storage, insert a new child into the storage, and this child would have the cloud file name we specify. And then we're going to upload the file name there. So what do I mean by this? This means that let's say I chose shakespeare.txt to be the file name. So this is the file that I want to upload, right? And I want to change its name on the cloud and just name it file number two on the cloud. I can do so by specifying cloud file name to be file number two. So this is how we sort of name things on the cloud. You can e even develop paths, all right? For more on this, you can check out the Firebase cloud storage video itself for more details, but this should be pretty clear here because it's standard and straightforward. All right, so let's continue. So now that we've put this file there, where is this actual file? It has a URL. Now, what if I want to store this URL? So we're gonna say URL is equal to storage dot child cloud file name dot get URL. So this is how we're going to get the URL from the name cloud file name and storage. Then we're going to get the URL from it and then store that URL in the database as follows. So, so we're gonna say name is name, then we're going to say age is so we're gonna say name name is name so the, the variable containing the name then we're going to say that age is the age and profession is profession and finally url is url so this may seem a bit ambiguous right now but we're going to actually explain it in depth when we run it for the first time and demo it and figure out what everything does all right, so let's just run it. So let's just run main.py. Okay, enter name. So we're gonna say John. Enter age, 45. Enter profession, engineer. Enter the name of the file you want to upload to storage. So let's say shakespeare.txt, right? So we want to upload this specific file to our storage. Then enter the name of the file in the cloud so what you want to call this file in the in the cloud so let's call it shakes.txt or you can even have a path to it so you can say books slash shakes.txt then you enter so you wait for firebase to do its thing upload the file to storage create a database node so let's go back and see so now we can see that in the database the users node has been created we have a new user and we have the information that this user provided as well as a url so let me just select it and go to this url to just check out what it has so if we select it we go to it here we have the text file that we just uploaded now I'm checking the storage to see what happens so let's just refresh the storage as well in the storage we can see that a folder was created which is books so let's go to books. So we saw here when we wrote the path of the file that what we want to name it in the cloud is books slash shakes.txt. So we created a folder called books. We created shakes.txt, the file within it. So this is where we uploaded it. So if we click here, we can actually see it. So this is the URL that we saved within the real-time database. So by doing this, we managed to allow each user to save some information about this user as well as save the file that this user uploaded. And now we can have access to this file through the real-time database. So let's just run it again and try in another trial with the other text file and just, just see how it works and truly understand what's going on. So if we say Jane and age is 34, profession is doctor, and the file that she wants to upload is Lauren, ipsum.txt and the name of the file in the cloud is sample text.txt now we wait for it to be done so now that it's done we go back here we go back to our original place in the storage no need to refresh this is what we have so instead of the folder because we didn't specify a path this time we actually just specified a name we have a new text file 
in the Firebase Storage. So this is like a Google Drive for your documents, but it's more related to your database. And this is what you have. This is the text file that we just uploaded. Going back to the database, we have a new user, new user information. All her information is there as well as the URL of her file. All right, so that's pretty clear. This is how we do things by linking the database with the cloud storage. So in part two, we're, what we're going to do is that we're going to take this, this what we just created, we're going to take the storage and the database that we have. And what we're going to do is that we're actually going to query the database for the URLs for a specific user, for example. So I wanna know what John uploaded and I wanna see that text and then download it. So what we're going to do that in part two, so stay tuned for that. Leave a comment, like, and subscribe if you're interested in the next video. Thank you and bye-bye.